here are all the questions that we will be looking at, but I will split them up so we have more space. Okay, so an electrochemical cell is set up using an aluminium rod and gas X. The initial EMF measured under standard conditions is 2.89. Okay, so it says state the standard conditions. Okay, so some learners, they get a little bit confused with STP, and then they get confused with that and standard conditions. So standard conditions, well, let's start with STP. STP is when we are talking about gas, and we're talking about like molar volume, you know, VM. And we typically have like a 22.4 decimeter number that comes up if we are at STP. Now, STP uh, stands for um, zero degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius, and then one atmosphere of pressure. When we are at standard conditions, which is what we do with electrochemistry, which is in the chapter of electrochemistry, then we are actually talking about one atmosphere of pressure, but then we're also talking about 25 degrees Celsius, not zero degrees Celsius, okay? And then if there are gases present, um, oh, there's the one atmosphere present, um, if there's gases, yep. And then all solutions, all solutions must have a certain concentration, and that is one mole per decimeter like that. Okay, so don't confuse the two. STP is not the same as standard conditions. So here they say state the standard conditions under which the cell operates. So when answering the question, just say that the temperature, temperature is going to be 25 degrees Celsius. You can also say 298 Kelvin. Uh, for the pressure, you can just say one atmosphere. Some people also say 101.3 kilopascals, that's also okay. And then uh, concentration, you're gonna say one mole per decimeter. Okay, now this question says, use a calculation to identify gas X. Okay, so we obviously need to go get our table. Um, now I did have to cut off this little piece here, but it just says aluminum and a gas. Okay, so the point is is that we have aluminium. Now that is pure aluminium. That's not that's not aluminium 3 plus. That is aluminium. So we're going to go circle that over there. Okay. Now we know that there is it, it, it is an electrochemical cell and it has a positive voltage. Does that mean that a reaction is happening spontaneously? Yes, it does. So it means that a reaction is happening, okay? So if you're starting with aluminium what is the only thing that can happen? Well, if a reaction is happening, the only thing that can happen is that it goes this way. It can't do anything else. You might say, yeah, but Kevin, doesn't the reaction go this way? But my answer is no, because then we would need to have aluminium three plus to start off with. So this clearly means that we are gonna have to go in that direction over there, okay? So we know then that that is oxidation. So the aluminium, um, is being oxidized, okay? Oxidation always happens at a anode, so that's the anode. So then I know that there's this formula to calculate my cell potential, and it goes cathode minus anode. They tell us what the cell potential is. I don't know the cathode, but I know my anode value is negative 1.66, okay? So that would end up becoming a plus 1.66. Okay, now you're gonna go solve for your cathode by taking the 1.66 over to the left, and we end up with 1.23 volts. So now we just go down to 1.23 volts, and I don't even have that on my table, just give me a second. And so here I've got some lower down values on the table. Now I know that if one of my materials started over here, then the other one, you know, because you get redox, so you get oxidation and reduction. So if this one is on the right-hand side of the table, then the other substance is on the left. So I go down to 1.23. There's two things over there. I only focus on the left and I look for any gas. See any gas? There it is. Oxygen has a, is, a, is in the gas phase. So the gas would literally be oxygen. Okay, so for the next questions, I'm just going to go write this reaction down. Now remember, this reaction would start on the left because this one started on the right because you have to get one of them being oxidized and one of them being reduced. So one goes to the right, one goes to the left. So we're just going to go write that down. Okay, so for that aluminium reaction, I'm just going to write it. Um, I know that on the table it looks like this, um, like that, but I'm just going to uh, write it in the correct order. So we said that it was the aluminium becoming aluminium three plus 
plus three electrons, okay? And we're not gonna put a double arrow because on the table it's a double arrow, but that's just them trying to show us that these reactions have the potential or the ability to go left and right. But we know that in our reaction it started with aluminum. So I'm also making it start with aluminum. Okay, and then the other reaction I wrote it down here was um, oxygen plus uh, 4H plus plus 4 electrons turning into 2H2O. Okay, so this question says write down the formula of the reducing agent. Now the reducing agent, if you remember, is the substance that is oxidized. Now, if you look at these two reactions, we know that oxidation is this one over here, where you've got the electrons on the right-hand side. Remember, if the electrons are on the right-hand side, that's oxidation. If the electrons are on the left-hand side, that is reduction. Let's write that down. If the electrons are on the right, that is oxidation. And then if the electrons on the left, that is reduction, okay? So the substance that is oxidized is in the reaction where um, the electrons are on the right. So that, that's this one, okay? So how do we know which one is the oxidation, um, or sorry, the reduction agent? You always look at your reactants. Your reactants are these ones and these, or not the electrons, these ones, okay? It's always the things um, before the arrow, those are your reactants. Okay, so we said that um, the substance that is oxidized, uh, or the, sorry, the reducing agent is the substance that is oxidized. So we go to the oxidation reaction. And so this over here is going to be our uh, reducing agent. So we can just say aluminum. Uh, this question says, write down the half reaction. These are half reactions um, that takes place at the cathode. Okay, so we know that cathode is reduction. That's where reduction happens. And reduction is when the electrons on the left. And so this is the answer for this question. This question says, write down the cell notation. So remember with cell notation, oh yes, and we know that this is a gas. Okay, so with cell notation, we know that um, you're always gonna put, okay, so you're gonna have a salt bridge, okay, over there. And then you're gonna have all the different phases of your anode and then all the different phases of your cathode. So in your anode, you're gonna have, so you always put your solid first. So you're gonna have aluminum as your anode. Remember we said this is the anode um, where oxidation happens, and then this is the cathode where reduction happens. Okay, so we're gonna start off by saying aluminum in the solid phase, then you're gonna put a line. Now you're gonna look for any gases. Are there any gases in this one? No, there's not. And then you're gonna look for any aqueous species. Aqueous species are the ones that are gonna have this charge over here. And so you're gonna say Al3 plus in the aqueous phase. Now, some learners are under the impression that over here, you have to go say one mole per decimeter. You don't have to. In fact, you don't even lose marks if you leave out the AQ part. You don't even have to put that in if you don't want to. You don't lose marks, okay? Um, right, now we go to the next part, uh, which is this one over here. Now this one's gonna be really interesting because we've got substances that are aqueous, we've got substances that are gases, and then water is always in the liquid phase. Now what's interesting is there's no solid. So what do you do when there's no solid? Because there has to be a solid. If there's no solid, then you need to use platinum, okay? And that'll always be the one at the very end. So platinum, like that. Okay, then we're gonna look for, now we've got a whole bunch of different phases here. We've got liquid, aqueous, and gas. So we are gonna go show all of those, um, and then we're gonna use a phase boundary in between. So in between that, and then you, it doesn't really matter. So like, let's say for example, we can say, uh, let's take the liquid for example. So that's gonna be um, H2O, that's in the liquid phase. Another phase boundary, um, H plus, which is the hydrogen ion, which is in the aqueous phase, phase boundary, oxygen, which is in the gas phase. So this is quite a challenging one uh, because it's, it's not the normal. Usually we just end up with like a solid, and an aqueous substance, uh, but now we have um, all of these different phases over here, okay? And then remember, if there's no solid, there has to be a solid, then you would rather just use platinum, because platinum is, um, it's a metal, but it's non-reactive, so it's highly stable, so it's it can be used with these chemicals over here, and it won't get involved in the reaction. 